today, you know, maybe one of the best examples of that. I mean, a team coming in on its first playoff appearance, I believe they're four touchdown underdogs and, you know, push you guys right till the end. Well, this is, the, you know, all those stats and everything you throw out the window right now, this, whether it's your first time or your 16th time, it's the team that goes in is all, the only one that matters. And that's why I'm very pleased with how these guys, because it was a couple of these guys' first time too. We may have been there, but some of our players hadn't been there. So when you got Austin kicking and doing those things and you kind of see how our team finished with the sack at the end, I mean, we were really rushing hard going down the stretch. So those are the things that matter. Shut them out after the first quarter, Coach, and um, injuries were taking place all the while, too, on your defense. Um, what all went into regrouping or just – whatever uh, you had to do, communicate to make sure that that defense could do what it did in those final three quarters? Well, the first, the first message, as I'll tell you, is the first message was, was if it felt like we, it was the fourth quarter and you're losing, it had only been two series because of how they had scored so fast on, so it was just calm down. And then it, when we got more towards the end of the second quarter and at halftime, it was like we're actually in real good shape for all the things that we have gone through. We were sitting at 13 to 13, so I just felt that we had weathered the storm, and that's kind of what happens in these games is there's always a rush of momentum, and it's who can sustain the game. And I thought we would, we had the potential to because of our offensive line, because of our, the way we play defense, and I know our special teams is very good. So we're fortunate, we're happy, but these guys play their tail off. So when I say we're fortunate, they earned it, and that's all that matters. They earned this win, and they should be very happy. Coach, obviously tonight you struggled with throwing the ball, Eli, you know, eight for 21. What specifically did, was Lamar doing, or was it something, make, if anything, or was it just a combination of nerves, or was it other things that maybe caused that to no. a little bit of a blip? No, the, the pro, it wasn't a problem, but they played man-to-man -man all night long. So they were, they were locked down man. If you just saw it out there, what was going on. They're a pure man team, and then they try to bring all the pressure they can off the man. So you either got to get the ball out, you get the big play, like the big touchdown throw, so it's kind of an all or nothing defense. And that's why we were pounding it and trying to run the ball and trying to wear on them because I thought we were bigger where they may have been maybe faster in the coverage part of it. So we just wanted to wear them down and play a four quarter game with them was the initial plan. How much coach, this is the second straight week you've had to play without Coach Baum calling plays. How much was that maybe a factor too in the offense? Well, I thought I thought Pat and the offensive coaches all did a tremendous job. I mean, it's it's a team effort. It's, it's, uh, it's preparing like we always do. I thought actually it was probably, and I told the coaches in the, in the locker room as I came out, it might have been the most well-coached offensive football game adjusting-wise that I've been involved with in a long time because the adjustments were going on all the time as far as trying to figure out a spray pass or a, or a out curl or whatever it was, and then the, the double move for the touchdown, uh, the wildcat on the third, third down towards the end there. All those things were came about as the game was unfolding. They weren't initially in the plan. So I thought our coaches, and compliment them, that may have been one of the most adjusted, well-coached offensive football games that I've been in a while. To go with that coach, I mean, you guys ran the ball 50 times today. Was that in the game plan, or was you know, what was the plan on, on that end? That, that was in the game plan, not 50 times, but <laughs> 45. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, we did want to. We knew they were fast. And... I actually thought that's the strength of our team is we've got a good offensive line. We've got some good tight ends. We had Bradley back, and we got Marcus. So I thought we had some strength in, in that area, and I knew that they were, were going to play man-to-man -man coverage all day on us. So if they're going to do that, then you're going to have to defend the run too, and that's was kind of the back and forth of everything. Both running backs ran extremely hard. Very pleased with running backs. You, when, you, when you look at them, Trevor ran super hard. Marcus always runs hard. And... As I told one of the coaches in the locker room that one of those last drives would get first down you, they were trying to come up with a play that was going to work, and the play is Marcus Weimiller. Go to who got you here, go to your horse, and Marcus finds a way to make a play. And Trevor did the same thing all night long. I mean, they made plays, they made runs. And then Eli may have made the biggest run of the game on the scramble down the sideline because that created the points to win the game. Austin, when you kind of get the feel of a game like this, and points are, are hard to come by, and you know, you kind of got to scratch and claw for everything. How much do you kind of relish, you know, your role and, and what you can mean uh, in a game like this? Um, I just go into every game thinking that I'm going to have an opportunity. I know that we crossed the 50, 50, like I said, on Sunday, that 
once we cross it that I'm thinking in my head that I'm probably going to go in. Um, so I got to make sure I'm ready. And then once I hit the first one and just kind of get in a rhythm, it's easier to just do it more and more, I guess. Um, so I just always got to mentally prepare. And then physically preparing, you can, that's a lot easier than mentally preparing as a kicker. So just once we cross 50, make sure I'm ready mentally. And then Murph and Joe do the rest and line blocks. So they make it easy on me, really. Coach, can you talk about what a difference maker he makes for your football team and what he did today? Austin? Yeah. Austin awesome made all the difference in the world. Uh, when you get in playoffs, you're going to be in close games. And your, your, your kicking was the difference in this game, their kicker versus our kicker. And, uh, you know, when we cross the 50, he's exactly right. He knows that. When we cross the 50, he's live. And uh, he has that range. So the accuracy is really what matters as a kicker. And he hit some big kicks today. The first one was tough. It was only from the six-yard line. Yeah. But also, no, that's the toughest angle for a left-footed kicker. And uh, so we took care of that. And then, uh, of course, he hit the long one, and that may have been easier for him than the, than the short one. So it's knowing your kicker, but he's, he's worked so hard, you know. And then I, I see Trevor. We'll go back to Trevor, too. Man, that guy played at probably 80% today. May have not been somewhere in that category. I mean, he came out and he was limping around before practice or before the in warm-ups. And I went up to him. I go, are you going to go today? And he had a comment that, <laughs> that, that yeah. but again, he wanted to play so bad and then to see him run the way he did you know, with the injuries and stuff. So now nah, we're winning because of, you know, the heart that these guys play with. Coach, your defense has come away with a lot of really key takeaways, turnovers throughout this season, and you had a couple of course, in those fumbles in the red zone today. Since nobody's hitting in practices anymore, um, what is it that you guys are teaching or preaching um, that makes it possible to continue to come up with these these key turn turnovers? I, 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 don't, I don't have an answer for that, that there's, there's some certain way to do it. I just know that it's drilled. It's been drilled since August, so it's habit. And I don't know that you have to actually hit live to create that. But these guys are making plays because of the intensity they're playing with, and I think the intensity probably creates the turnover because of the collision, because of the hit, because of whatever it takes. But I think a great example of our team and really, if I look at both sides of the team, the wildcat run at the end versus the pass rush at the end, we got after him. Those last three pass rushes, I mean, it was we were on top of him in no time. When you look at the first three pass rushes, we couldn't get a hand on him. So we got stronger as the game went on, and, and I, hopefully that's the way our team will respond as we continue through this process. You talk about uh, Rima's move and, and how smooth that was and how, how he got over and how that opened the game to help you a little bit. That was, you go back to the offensive coaches, and, and uh, I tell you what, that was a great call at the right time. That was a call that you made. That's an instinctive call. It's more of a timing call than it is a great call. And he timed it up right. It was set up right. And then Ryman made a double move on him because they were biting so hard on the drive route. And he, I watched the whole route. And uh, he had that guy lock, stock, and barrel. He took, he took the bait and, and opened himself up. So Jalen's really gotten better uh, this last month. But then you look at Jalen James on the other side. He made a tremendous catch on our sideline. So we're lean at a lot of positions, but the ones that are playing, the ones that come in, that's awesome. Go back to this one about Shakespeare. Get, had to go in and play a corner for us, and that's a true freshman, and did a great job. So we're lean, but they're playing hard. The other freshman stepped up for you. Really in the second half after Alfonso goes down, Bryce Flater comes in and has yeah. a heck of a third quarter um, <laughs> sack. And he didn't have the forced fumble on the on the uh, second one there, but he was in on that tackle. And really, Duncan Furch was fantastic. Alfonso was great in the first half, too. What do you think about your linebackers as a whole today? As a, as a whole, if you only knew what the linebackers are going through every day, because <laughs> that's <laughs> – it's a, it's a shuffle every day because of all the injuries that we've had and the numbers that we've had. But uh, Bryce Flater and then, you know, I'm just glad he didn't get ejected for targeting again. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he, in all seriousness, Bryce really was a difference. I told DJ in the locker room again, Bryce Flater may have been the difference in the third and fourth quarter because he was making a lot of tackles on that run game. And he will run and he will hit you when he gets there. Ellerson, can you take us through that? last sack of yours on that first down play and they had 15 seconds left. How were you able to get to a quarterback who had, you know, given you guys fits all day? Um, we actually had a tough game called. So I was supposed to come underneath and I actually got in trouble for it in the first quarter because the quarterback scooted straight up my gap. But uh, he, uh, my tackle didn't really get out of his stance. So I just went for it and ended up being able to get there. And yeah. Talk about this, the defense today. 
you force two fumbles inside your own 20. Uh, you know, you have to put pressure on the kicker to miss two. That was the difference of the game. They had four opportunities to score points, and the defense came up big both times, uh, four times. Was, yeah, we did a good job getting, uh, making hits, you know. Or Farley said, it's just been training us since August, so I mean, we may not have heard them the week, but when it comes to Saturdays, we're ready to play. And Ellison, your, your first sack there, you're getting held. You you had to reach back with your left arm and just snag him there. You know, what was going through your mind when you're seeing him kind of getting outside, knowing that he's quick, knowing that if you, you get that uh, sack there, you're going to make that hard, uh, field goal harder. What was kind of going through your head through all that? Yeah, my heart jumped a little bit. I saw him get outside, and I knew that he's a little quick, so... I uh, just reached the arm out and uh, ended up being able to trip up one of his ankles and take him down. It was pretty exciting. It was a fun moment. Trevor, you guys have had uh, games this year where uh, Eli's played a big part in the win in the passing game, and then there's been games lately where the running game has played you know, the largest part offensively in the win. How much confidence does the offense have right now in its ability to win games any way it needs to? We're confident to win a game any way we have to, uh, as through the air on the ground. I mean, coming into this game, we knew our own lives would be a big part of it. and. They came up and they showed out and they played their game. That's why me and Marcus both went over the century mark there. Trevor, talk about Coach McCann and Coach Danielson having to take on for Coach Bond with this family emergency and with the job they've done to get you guys ready these past two weeks and especially this week. Oh, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, um, I mean, we, we've been working day in and day out. I mean, they come into practice, they're ripping and running. Probably comes down there and gets, gets everyone wild, wound up, running around. <laughs> and, uh, we just came in the game prepared, ready to play, and we knew what they were going to do, we knew what we were going to do, and we just executed as a team. When you're seeing Marcus bust off runs, does that make you want to go in there? All right, well, now it's my turn. Hey, I go in when he gets tired. I mean, he's busting off runs. I'm like, hey, Mark, stay in there. Keep running, man. I mean, it doesn't matter who gets it, me or him. We're both on the sideline cheering for each other and excited. So, Mark, I know you and your coaching staff go right to work now on Davis, but as far as the players, what's the routine like now? Do you accelerate? Do you take time off now? Or is it a normal game week for you? Do you we, won't, we won't change a bit. We didn't really change this much this week. We will, we'll, have, we'll meet tomorrow. Uh, we'll have Monday off, and we will go on uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We will not break stride uh, from what we've done. We just got to get ready for another football team. Coach, we kind of know or are aware of the linebacker situation, but what now about Isaiah Nimmers and then Xavier Wentz? I know Xavier went through pregame today, wasn't well, able to play, and what's the status on Nimmers? Yeah, we'll have to. I have not heard what the total status is on that, but Xavier was kind of in his position about a week ago, so they, they come around. You never know when they're going to make it back. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see what, what Tuesday brings. But uh, they, they need to enjoy this one, and, you know, these are, these are hard to get. you got to enjoy them when you get them. But uh, we will have to find a way to get the next man in and get him ready to play. So if it's Shakespeare or, or uh, Roosevelt hasn't played in a while, he's, he's still ready to go. So, you know, we've, we've got a few bodies left. What was it with Nimmer? Was it knee? Or what? Uh, the knee. Okay, well, that's what that was my indication when he came off the field. So it didn't look good when they brought him off. I mean, so it's we've had a few of those lately. When you've had so much turnover at the linebacker position <coughs> specifically, how important has it been to have a steadying force like Duncan Birch in there leading you guys in tackles again today? Oh, it's yeah. it's it means everything. Duncan Duncan's very intelligent. You can make again. There, there's a lot of adjusting going on in defense, if you can imagine today, and. You can't make the kind of adjustments unless you have a player in the field that can adjust that quickly. And with one word, Duncan can make everything work for us out there. So we, we, on defense, there's multiple adjustments, as you would expect. And Duncan was able to do that for us and get all 11 on the same page. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks for coming, everyone. Appreciate you.